Hey, welcome back to Carl Prusa MMA. I'm Carl Prusa. Today I am with Freight Train Thomas Lane. Thomas, you're gearing up for XFC 50. You're taking on Dylan O'Sullivan uh, a week from today in Lakeland, Florida. I can't believe it's only seven days out. Uh, but how are you doing? How are you feeling? And how are you enjoying the last bit of training camp here? I'm feeling great. I get to finish training camp off tomorrow, and I'm excited to compete and perform in seven days. Now, before we start really getting into the fight, how did you find your way into this crazy world of mixed martial arts? So, a little about me is I was a Division One All American in wrestling. So, when you finish college wrestling, there's a few routes you can go, and you can try to make an Olympic team. You can coach college wrestling. You can fight or get a real job. Those are your kind of four options after college wrestling. And I didn't have passion in um, freestyle wrestling at all, and I really didn't want to coach anymore. So. I tried the whole job out for like a couple months and it wasn't for me. So then that's why I said, I'm going to give fighting a chance and know how to wrestle pretty well. So let's see if I can do this whole fighting thing. Now, what was that transition like from wrestling to mixed martial arts? Is it pretty seamless? Um, I mean, it's different. I mean, getting punched in the face is definitely different than wrestling. I'm not going like, to lie to you. But for me, I had a good gym and a good training partner to help me transition from wrestling into fighting and i have good mentors that help help me get there and i'm around very good like high level mma wrestlers so for me it's been a good transition how did you find your way over to jim O? obviously representing some very high level guys some ufc guys some very top regional guys how did you find your way over there um so after college i like went went and viewed a few gyms so i'm from long island originally and um I knew uh, Chris Wadman a lot of my whole life. He's from Long Island guy, and then I knew Chris Honeycutt also. So that's how I got – those were the connections that I got toward Jimmo, and I found it there, and I, this was a good fit for me. Now, that's going to be my next question. What is it like to train with a guy like Chris Wadman, obviously a guy with a great wrestling background? I mean, UFC Hall of Famer, in my opinion, former champion, very big name in the sport. What is it like to be able to train with a guy like that? Um, it's fun. I mean, you can't really beat the experience or the, the knowledge that he has. I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely, it's fun. Like, it's, it's a good experience. I can't complain at all. It's definitely has elevated my game and fast tracked me along with fighting and to a to a high level because of it. Were you able to watch him fight last weekend? I was there. Oh, how was that? How was I mean watching it on TV? I mean, when he came out, uh, crowd was going absolutely crazy. What was that like in person? So I was not in person so I, I was backstage in the locker room with him before he walked i was not in the corner this time but i was backstage with ray longo uh stephen thompson and jeff jimmo i just stayed in the back of him and helped him warm up and it was there all fight week but it's cool i mean i cornered him a few times and this time it was, it's always cool being there and supporting your buddy and your friend is he going to potentially be at your fight next week no he'll be on the weigh-in show for uc 300 Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now going back a little to the fight, uh, taking on Dylan O'Sullivan, a guy who is five and zero. You're three and zero. Very good matchmaking here. You have two top prospects going at each other. Uh, do you like the challenge of taking on another undefeated opponent? Yeah. No, I definitely enjoy the challenge. I think it's a good fight for both of us, and to see where we're at, both of us, and I think it's a really good obstacle for both of us. Now, what do you think of him as an opponent? What do you think he brings to the table here? Um, well, he has to knock me out. That's really it. Like, I am, and I don't know, maybe this sounds a little brash and cocky, but like, the only way he beats me, he has to put my lights out. I mean, he, and a decision, and like, he knows I'm coming to wrestle. I'm going to come take him down. I'm going to try to maul him. And he's trying to put my lights out. And it's a pretty basic striker versus wrestler matchup. Now, one thing that I've noticed is um, the importance of being a well-rounded mixed martial artist in this day and age. I mean, you have to be able to wrestle. You have to have that striking game. But more than anything to me, it seems like wrestling is almost the perfect base. Like, if I was going to design a fighter, I want their main skill set to be wrestling. How important of a skill do you think that is for fighters to possess in this day and age? I mean, like, you take this matchup. Like, like I think, like, being a wrestler, you can dictate where the fight goes. And that's, I mean, he knows, I mean, it's not rocket science. You've watched my fights, you watch his fights. Like, he doesn't want to be, he's not a fan of being on his butt. He's not a fan of being in the grappling exchanges. He does not want to grapple. I want to grapple. I want to make the fight to the ground. So it's, for me, I think that I can dictate where the fight goes and get to the ground. 
Now you're fighting on the XFC promotion. Uh, they're doing a big rebirth, uh, new ownership, um, big, huge card. I mean, this card is pretty stacked here. You have Tim Johnson, Dorian Abbey is the main event. Pearl Gonzalez is on there. Hannah Goldie, Emmanuel Sanchez, the headline, some Bellator shows. I mean, three UFC vets, Bellator, former Bellator fighters. What is it like to be on a card like that? Um, It's cool. I mean, I don't know, to me, it doesn't really mean anything. Like, I'm not trying to, like, be, like, it, to me, it's cool and all. Like, it's awesome. But I have a, I have a job at hand against Dylan O'Sullivan. Like, I don't I don't care much for the main event. I don't care much for the co-main event. At the end of the day, it's the only person that matters on April 12th is Dylan O'Sullivan. Now, with the win over Dylan O'Sullivan, where do you think this brings you in your journey to get to the bigger shows? I mean, it definitely, for, for both of us, I mean, it's definitely a, a good – it's a good fight. And I think a win over him, like – will put me on the map because, I mean, I've had struggle finding fights. I mean, I've had guys pull out, and it's been hard finding. People have turned me down. So I think a win over Dylan O'Sullivan will put me on the map that I am a, I'm a real prospect. I'm a real challenge. Now, what is the ultimate goal for you here? What do you want to accomplish with your MMA endeavors? I mean, the end of the day, make money and win, fight, win fights and win championship belts. That's, that's the goal of any fighter. Like, at the end of the day, we are prize fighters, so provide for me and my family and – provide for me and ultimately end day would become a world champion. You know, one thing I want to pick your brain about is the sacrifices needed to be a mixed martial artist, you know, especially in your position, uh, you're not making thousands of pounds, thousands of millions of dollars fighting just yet. Um, a lot of guys have a full 40 hour a week job and they balance that with the training and fighting on the side. They have families to take care of and they have to make time for fighting. How do you get through that sacrifice and that grind? Oh, um, just time management. That's really important. Just managing your time, making sure that you allot times to all those things because it definitely is hard, but you have to manage your time properly and just be very diligent with, with the time you have. All right, Thomas, last question for you, my man. In a perfect world, what goes down April 12th against Dylan O'Sullivan? Um, either a TK or a submission in – in a perfect world, it'd be round one, but I don't. I see it going of maybe round two or three. But perfect world, it's a submission or TK early in the fight. All right, Thomas. I wish you nothing but the best. Uh, good luck, and I'll see you in Florida next week. All right, thank you.